part two, uh, and that's why we're not supporting it. Call Grant Robertson. Mr Chair, um, and I'm sure you'll, you'll call other Labour members as well um, in the near future. I wasn't quite aware of that. Uh, the uh, uh, part two of the bill, as my colleague Chris Farfoy was just saying, represents a part that the Labour Party cannot support. And one of the things I just want to talk about the Mental Health Commission and its role, and, I, and other, I'm sure other colleagues will, will want to talk about this as well, is the question of independence and independent leadership within the health sector and particularly within, within mental health. As has been discussed by other speakers, mental health issues in New Zealand are dealt with at a number of levels of the health system and in a number of ways. What the Mental Health Commission has been able to do is provide an independent voice, provide independent leadership, provide the monitoring of mental health activities that I believe is at risk with this proposal from the government. The proposal from the government to locate uh, the Mental Health Commission uh, or locate a mental health commissioner uh, within the Health and Disability Commissioner's office is going to provide them with some positive links with, uh, with other parts of, of the quality and regulatory monitoring uh, part of the health system. But the trade-off for doing that, Mr Chair, is a trade-off away from the independence of the Mental Health Commission, away from the focus that the Minister says rubbish. Well, the Minister could get up and take a call and tell us how he will be ensuring that the Mental Health Commission's independent leadership is now going to continue on within the structure. Because that's the fear that many in the sector have, that the independent leadership will have gone. The Mental Health Commission over the years has challenged institutions within the health system as to whether they are performing their role properly, whether they are actually implementing the blueprint. Is that going to be able to carry on with someone now within the, mental, the uh, Health and Disability Commissioner's office, somebody who is now a Deputy Commissioner within that office? And, and people who came in and, and submitted to the committee made clear that that was their concern. They could live with this change, but would the Mental Health Commission's independent role, would that be able to be carried on within this? And I don't believe, Mr Chair, that at this point in time we've had anything from the government to indicate that that would be the case. Uh, Blueprint 2 is, uh, has been worked on, and that's good, and it's positive, and we always felt that that would be the, the role that the Mental Health Commission would have to get, to get that going. But what we now have is a situation where many in the sector believe that the, the, the focus on implementation and monitoring of Blueprint 2 is at risk with this proposal, because this is a vital transition point in the way that mental health uh, funding and mental health support is provided uh, in New Zealand. And at that very point, the question is, is the Minister saying to this House, we can get that implemented, we can ensure that the monitoring is going to occur, we can ensure that the linkages between the provision of services and mental health policy is going to be able to, uh, to carry on. And I, and I don't believe that in its current form uh, I am convinced uh, that that's going to happen. I don't want to over-dramatise this, Mr Chair. I think it's clear that the government has tried to come up with a way of continuing on with mental health uh, uh, monitoring and, ment and, the, and the provision of of policy advice and services around mental health, but I do think this is the wrong way to go about getting the outcomes that we want for the new blueprint uh, for mental health. Uh, some of the other ideas that the Minister may choose to comment on that were raised in the Select Committee includes the role of mental health consumers in being able to have some input into the future uh, provision of, of, of monitoring and services around uh, mental health issues. Uh, Overall, in New Zealand, over the last four years, we've seen a number of district health boards decide that where they're going to go to find the funding cuts that have been forced on them by this government is in the area of mental health. Certainly in my own area, in the Capital Coast District Health Board, that's what they've done. And the providers of mental health services in the community have had their budgets cut. Wellink, one of the providers of services to mental health consumers in the Wellington and the Capital Coast region, has had its funding cut by over a third. Now, they're continuing to deliver the services because the government's very lucky that many of the service providers in this mental health sector are so dedicated that they will keep doing that. But the question that is, has to be asked is in that environment, in an environment where district health boards, forced by the underfunding of this government, have made a decision to take cuts in mental health, what will, that be, what will that mean 
for a mental health, the Mental Health Commission going out of existence? Will the Mental Health Commission's successor, this person who is now the Deputy Commissioner, Mr Chair, uh, Grant Robertson. this person who is now the Deputy Commissioner, will they actually be able to provide the challenge to what's going on in our district health boards around New Zealand right now? Will they actually be standing up to the institutions who manage and control mental health and actually provide the, 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 the advocacy and the promotion of mental health and the linkages of policy and services together? And we do not know that. We have not had a convincing answer from this government. And it does give people in the sector the, the impression that once again mental health has been pushed to the side, once again mental health is the poor cousin of the health sector. The, the government could have carried on the Mental Health Commission, carried on its mandate, ensure that Blueprint 2 got, <coughs> got, um, got fully up and running, and then made its decision about whether it wanted to carry on with the Commission or not. Instead, it brings the date forward and puts into, into play risk and a lack of confidence within the sector. So, Mr Chair, I'm going to end my contribution right. there, but I do, <laughs> well, I hope the Minister takes a call. I hope the Minister will take a call and answer the concerns of New Zealanders as to whether or not his government's really committed to mental health. And the question he needs to answer beyond the ones about this structure is, is this government prepared to fund mental health in a way that gives it the prominence it deserves in our community and our society? Because they haven't up to now. Mr Chair. Uh, the Honourable Dr Jonathan Coleman. Mr Chair, there was only one fact that came out of that speech by the uh, air.